Ever wonder how prepared the average American is when it comes to emergency savings? On average, how much of the population do you think has an emergency fund that can cover three months of expenses? Is it 72%, 48%, or 59%? Take a moment to make your guess, and in this video, I'll be sharing the surprising truth. I will also share five essential ways to kickstart your journey to saving money and ensure that you are prepared for anything that life throws you in the future. Let's go. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name's Evan and if you're new here, I'm a real estate agent and mortgage broker. And today we're gonna to be talking about emergency funds, specifically how prepared are Americans with emergency situations. So according to Bankrate, a shocking 48% of Americans say that they have enough of an emergency fund to cover three months of expenses. Now note, this is the national average. The percent goes up with generations. So 29% of Gen Z, 41% of Millennials, 42% of Gen X, and 65% of Baby Boomers. Now, while the percentage goes up with age, it's still startling to imagine that a large portion of Americans are not prepared for any emergency. Now, most financial experts and gurus recommend three to six months of money saved up for your emergency fund. While in the past I did agree with this, given what's happened recently in society, I suggest having more than that. While having it is good, having more of it is better. So potentially six months to a year's worth of money for expenses. So if your monthly expenses are roughly $3,500, your mortgage, your gas, your car payments, your groceries, your utilities, having between $20,000 and $40,000 puts you in a very good position. For people just starting out on their journey and starting their careers, having six months to a year's worth of money saved up is a lot to ask. And I completely understand with that, but it is something to work towards. When we are young, more things are considered emergencies because we have a lower paycheck, we have less money saved up, and we have fewer systems in place. Therefore, you need to dip into your emergency funds more often than you would if, let's say, you've been working for 20 years already. So let's say your check engine light goes on, and unfortunately, you can't afford a mechanic right now because you get paid at the end of the month. So you keep going, you keep going, and then bam, something happens. And now compare this to when you're older and when you have enough money and you have systems in place so you can afford routine car maintenance so that you never get to this position in the first place, preventing this emergency from happening altogether. Now, don't get me wrong. Adults have emergencies all the time, but they typically are different from the ones that you have when you're young because adults have those systems in place. And typically the emergencies that happen to adults are usually completely out of their control. What I suggest you do as soon as possible is write down what you consider an emergency. Is a flat tire an emergency? Is going to the hospital an emergency? Is needing a plane ticket right now an emergency? It's up to you. And guess what? It's different for everybody. So write it down and make sure that when the situation comes, can I access these funds or not? Budgeting. Budgeting is huge when it comes to emergency planning. If you just spend everything that you make, that should an emergency come, and God forbid if it comes, unfortunately, you won't be ready. So making sure that you have enough money saved up for any situation that comes is crucial planning for your future. Now, to be clear, the funds that you have for your emergency situation should be separate from your savings or checking account. This money is money that you will not touch in any normal circumstances and not have the opportunity to accidentally touch in a normal circumstance. Now, that doesn't mean that the money for your emergency situation just has to be sitting in an account somewhere just doing nothing. You can be using that money to earn more money for your emergency situation when it comes. One thing to consider is a 401k. So if you earn a salary, chances are you have access to a 401k or some variation of it. So you're allowed to put an X amount of money every month and every year into your 401k and your company will match it. Just make sure to contribute regularly and try to contribute the max, but be conscious of if you can afford it. Now, should an emergency arise, you can pull money out of your 401k to use for that situation. There is a 10% penalty because typically a 401k is used for you when you retire, but you would rather have that money now and take the penalty than not have the money and just be in a very bad situation. 
An alternative is a Roth IRA or a traditional IRA. Now these are individual retirement funds, meaning that it has nothing to do with the company you work for. It is specifically for you. So again, try to contribute every single month and every single year as much as you can, making sure you can afford it. And should a situation come, you'll be able to pull money out of it, but there will be a penalty. So only do it if you have to. And lastly, insurance. Now it will cost you in the short term and you'll never know exactly when you will need it. But when that situation arises, you'll be thankful that you have the protection that you have. The five types of insurance that people recommend you get are car, home, life, health, and disability insurance. A situation can happen anywhere and at any time and having the right protection means that you're protecting you, your future, and potentially your family. An emergency can happen at any time and typically they don't look at your bank account to see if you can afford the situation that you're about to have. Situations like a car accident or a medical emergency or having enough money for a plane ticket to say goodbye to a relative that lives across the country. Having the money saved for these situations is crucial and it will make life easier and a lot less stressful knowing that should these situations come up, you'll be good. During my research, I came across a Jewish proverb that I think sums up this video very nicely. If a problem can be solved with money, it's not a problem. It's a cost. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, then please click the video up here. I think you'll enjoy it as well. Also, if you haven't, please consider subscribing, liking the video, and hitting the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos.